Hello friends, and welcome to my channel if you are new, or welcome back if you're back. If you are new, hi, my name is Rabbit, and my pronouns are they, them, and if you're back, welcome back. Either way, I'm really happy you're here. I gotta say, I'm really excited about today's video. It's another one in this sort of fall series that I've been making lately and just absolutely enjoying the heck out of completing my fall bucket list and having so many adventures that I never thought I'd have, but I'm really excited and delighted to be able to. In this vlog, Cage and I are visiting a sunflower farm, we're going to a U-Pick, we're getting some pumpkins for carving, that's super exciting. I'm going on a fall walk and baking a lot of very delicious treats, as well as doing some obligatory fall art and going to a corn maze and generally just soaking up all the perfect fall vibes while they're here. As I've said before, this season is my favorite one and it feels so brief, especially in the climate that I live in in Canada. So I just want to treasure every moment of it and these videos have really been helping me um, get out there more and do things that are really fun for me. So if you're interested in coming along to this little adventure with me, please keep on watching. So Cajun and I's first stop was this big sunflower farm. The day we chose to drove out there was ridiculously overcast and cloudy and just the absolute dream of October weather. The entire way on the drive, we've been listening to The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. If you haven't heard of it, it's about a boy named Nobody who lives in a graveyard and is raised by the ghosts who live there. It's absolutely delightful and we listened to it on just our library app so it was free and it was read by Neil Gaiman and it was an absolute delight. The sunflower farm was like nothing I'd ever seen before. I had no clue that sunflowers came in so many varieties, all the different sizes, the huge ones, the tiny ones, the ones that were like growing out of themselves, the ones that were dying or just about to sprout, thick stems that you could like wrap your entire fist around. It was just amazing. I felt like I was on a movie set or in an alien planet or something. The entire maze felt really empty. We got there like quite early in the morning and because of the weather and since it was like kind of the end of the season, I don't think many people were interested in going. It just felt like being in the most perfect abandoned place I'd ever seen. <laughs> we really enjoyed just taking our time, walking all down the different rows, holding hands and seeing all the different species and varieties. It was quite spooky and quite delightful, especially like there's something about big quantities of things that is like a little bit scary and makes you feel like you're in a horror movie. Big mazes are always kind of creepy in that way and this place had multiple mazes. Not only was there this big sunflower maze, but there was also a corn maze and a willow tree maze and other mazes that were like just beginning to sprout so you could just see like the labyrinthian circle of them in the ground. The corn maze as usual was one of my favorites and it was so fresh and green when we went. It was quite shorter than the previous one we had been to but it was really wonderful to see nonetheless. They had mazes of giant sunflowers and mazes of just regular ones but I think the giant ones were the most impressive for me. I couldn't believe how enormous <laughs> these things get. It was both of our first time ever seeing a sunflower maze, so we really, really enjoyed it. Um, also nearby was this giant pasture that was big and empty and also felt like a movie, and there were all these cows right across the field. Lots of them were babies and they were just so cute. I absolutely adore cows, so we got to go kind of see them from afar. One of the best parts about this particular farm is that they had a whole section that was a you pick situation. There were all different flowers, vegetables, you could pick sunflowers, corn stalks, and all sorts of different wildflowers and different varieties that they had there. It was an absolute treat for us. Um, I wanted to go, it was like shortly after Cage's birthday, and I thought that he would be able to find some exciting items for his bug art that he makes and I think it was a really good time for the both of us. For me, the spooky weather and for him, the ability to forage so many different varieties of interesting 
flowers. It was just an absolute treat. Though I'm usually not much of a fresh flowers person, we did collect quite a lot of sunflowers and it was really, really fun. One of my favorite things was collecting the huge ones that were like dying because we were able to put them outside and have like the birds feed on them. Of course, it was mostly the squirrels that fed on them when we finally did get them home, but it was one of Tuna and Lemon's favorite things to watch. So fun for the whole family, wouldn't you say? Anyway, back to the farm. Um, they also had, as usual, like kind of a little petting zoo area. There was a big chatty goose named Amelia, and here's me exploring the willow maze. It was really, really wonderful. I think they said they started the willow one seven years ago, and it felt just like a bit of a fairy tale land. Very magical and really special to see. I was very excited that we got to go. Then we were on the way back home and continuing listening to our delightful audiobook. <laughs> And when I was finally home, it was time to display all the wonderful flowers that we had collected together. This was surprisingly really fun for me. Like I said, I didn't think of myself as a fresh flowers person before, but having these around while they were still like bright and lively was just an absolute delight. They really put a smile on my face. And now that they're dried out and just kind of beautiful husks, I I still just find them even more beautiful and I'm still displaying them in their kind of dried out state as a reminder of like our lovely time. Hello friends! So I just got off work like probably an hour ago and had dinner and I desperately need to wash my hair as you can probably tell um, but I figured you know what it's spooky season one of the things on my bucket list for this season is to dye my hair orange I don't think I've ever gone fully orange like I tried for like a day but I couldn't handle it so I went right back like the next day so um, I'm going to go ahead and bleach my roots and like dye the whole thing orange hopefully it looks really good I'm I have a feeling it won't because I feel like I look better with dark colored hair but it's the festive season it's the spooky season and it'll be like a month and if it looks really horrible then I can dye it back so um wish me luck and hopefully next time you see me I'll be full pumpkin mode. So um, yeah, we'll look forward to that. See you soon. The process hath begun. You're actively turning blonde as the bleach is sitting on my hair. So wish me luck. I washed the bleach out and it's looking super cool. I feel like a phoenix or something. It's official! I have orange hair now. Um, some of it stayed kind of red, but honestly, I think it worked out. Um, not as bright as the last time I did it, which is great because the last time it was like a bit obnoxious looking honestly on me. Um, yes, success! Um, autumnal equinox transformation has been completed. The, my hair always looks kind of stupid the first day after it's been washed, so just uh, ignore that and tomorrow it will be looking more like itself. <laughs> Next item on the bucket list was to visit a corn maze, and I know that we like unofficially did one, but I had gotten tickets to this one before we had unofficially did so many, so it was still exciting to go. Part of this place was this huge petting zoo. They had llamas, alpacas, bunnies, and goats, and just a whole bunch of cuties. The cows were absolutely gorgeous. I think cows are one of the prettiest animals that exists. Like, it's unbelievable in my opinion. Uh, but the baby goats, I think, were Cage's favorites. There was this thing where you could buy a feed bag that came with like hay for some of the animals and little pellets for other of the animals and um, a stick of bird feed and all sorts of different, different treats for different sorts of animals. <laughs> I think one of our favorite parts was this big pond of reeds with this enormous collection of just wild birds that were sitting on them. If you got too close, they would flock away all in a huge big swarm and it just felt like Alfred Hitchcock the birds perhaps, or a more beautiful, less scary version of that. And Cage made friends with this one specific goat. Um, he just stood there for a very long time while Cage petted him and I think they had a special bond, or Cage thought so anyway. Anyway, it was time to go to the main event, the thing that I had come to the farmyard for, was the freaking corn maze. 
it was so cool. So yes, granted, this was not as tall as the first corn, corn maze that we had visited in British Columbia. However, this one was like in its kind of dying stages. So everything was the most incredible beige rustling spooky horror movie kind of feeling. It felt like October when we went with the wind in the air rustling all the corn leaves and like the sun just barely setting. I had gotten tickets so we could go while it was like turning nighttime so we went around like 4 p.m. and it was just incredible to get to be in the corn maze and getting lost while we got to see the sun go down. There were also these structures that were kind of big stairs you could go on top of and take a look out at the whole corn maze. That was really exciting and at one point we just decided to lie down and look up at everything and it was one of the most magical moments. It felt really, really special to just be able to listen to the stalks of corn and stir up at the clouds. It felt weirdly nostalgic, even though I'd never really been in a corn maze up until this year. <laughs> Anyway, Cage was convinced that we wouldn't get lost, but we totally did. We could not find our way out. It was absolutely impossible near the end, um, <laughs> which was a bit of a struggle, but I had fun. I think that's the whole point of the corn maze, um, is to get lost, and this was the first time we had like properly allowed ourselves to get super lost in one. I had a delightful time with that. We did manage to find our way out eventually, and then we got to the other exciting thing that they called the pumpkin patch, which I was expecting to be an actual pumpkin patch, but it was not, which was still really cool. One of the best things was this big like Cinderella pumpkin mobile. I was having the time of my life. I thought the uh, pumpkin mobile was absolutely delightful, and with my freshly dyed hair, I just felt at one with the pumpkins, and we picked out ours for carving this season, and I couldn't be happier than it was on the way back home for a cozy night in. I have been really craving apple cider ever since this season has started, but nowhere really sells proper apple cider, and though I don't have like a juicer, I found the recipe to make something sort of comparable, which I was very excited to try, and I gotta say, highly recommend because not only does this make a delicious cider, the entire process of making it makes your house smell like the most delicious heavenly apple cinnamon spiced orange ginger heaven. Uh, bonus points was that I got to watch one of my favorite nostalgic TV shows, Charmed, while making this recipe, so I was just having the time of my life. It was one of those late night bakings. Basically, you slice up 10 apples and two oranges, throw in some peels of ginger, some different spices, whatever your heart fancies, with boiling hot water into a pot or two pots if you're me and don't have one pot that is large enough for that many apples, and you boil it for about two hours. Once it's been boiled, you mash it, and once it's been mashed, you boil it again for another hour, and then strain it, and you have the most incredible apple cider. It was really really delicious and I was making it for a very exciting event um, of which required an extra thing for the apple cider so I'm taking an extra of the apples that we had lying around and peeling all of the skin off cutting it in half and then using a little teaspoon thingy to carve out some little spooky faces. I wanted to make some shrunken apple heads <laughs> to float in the apple cider. <laughs> Basically, you just carve out your little face. Um, I used a combination of the knife and the teaspoon, but I would highly recommend the teaspoon. It's way easier and safer, probably. And then you cover them in some lemon juice and throw them in the oven for about two hours on a fairly low temperature, like 200 degrees. And once they come out, they're kind of brown and a little bit shrunken and very exciting. Um, <laughs> so it was just a really delightful addition to the apple cider. I got our little to-go cups ready and ladled the hot cider into the cups. I added a couple of spoonfuls of brown sugar and some cinnamon sticks as well as our little shrunken heads and then we were ready to go on our walk. The whole purpose of the cider was I wanted a spooky drink for our fall walk that was on the bucket list. <laughs> So then it was off to go on our delightful walk, and I gotta say, it was wonderful. In the part of Canada that I live in, the trees don't really change color other than from green to yellow to brown, but there was a little bit of red and maroon that I got to see on this walk, and it was just making my day. We got to see some ducks in a nearby pond and just walk all these wonderful bike paths that were quite populated 
um, but it just felt like the bustling energy of autumn was getting into everyone and everyone was excited to look at the different colors of leaves and see them falling onto the ground. <laughs> when the leaves start changing colors, it makes me feel like all of the world is putting on their Halloween costumes and getting all elegant for the season as if they're going to a ball and it just makes me so happy seeing the colors change. When I was back home, I was still feeling in the mood for baking and I've been wanting to make some sort of pretzel situation for a while now, so I'm getting my base started for that, some yeast, some warm water, some sugar, mixing that up and then adding the flour. Once the yeast is all nice and frothy, you can add it into the flour and stir it up nice and gently until it's well incorporated and then we can start to knead it. And I gotta say, this is one of the worst and best parts <laughs> of bread making, dough making. Um, the worst at the beginning because of like the horrible texture when it's all like dry and weird, but the best when you get to touch like the fluffy soft flour and when it starts to get smooth and you've been kneading it for a while and you just feel like a little cottage core, little prairie lady <laughs> or something. It's just a lot of fun to make doughs and things in my opinion. Or you can feel like a witch cackling over your cauldron um, making your pretzels. <laughs> You know, anyway, it was very exciting um, since I hadn't been doing baking in a while, since I'd been quite busy. It's time to grease the pan and leave the dough in there to rise for a couple hours. It's nice and expanded, so then we get to cut it and separate it into all the pieces that I want. But it wouldn't be a regular Halloween edition of this video if we were just to make regular pretzels, would it? No, of course not. So we are using our little coffin dish to put some baking soda in there and roll these little babies out into some bones. Yes, that's right. Um, <laughs> basically, you just make a really long noodle and then knot both ends of it and they look like little bones. And does it kind of feel like you're eating dog treats? Perhaps, but it adds to the spooky factor and is very exciting. <laughs> Basically, I just dip them in the baking soda solution um, and then set them out onto the baking sheet, sprinkle them with some salt, and stick them in the oven. Once they're out, they're gorgeous golden brown. We're going to butter them lightly and look how gorgeous they were. Ooh, very delicious. It was very exciting. I'll link the recipe that I used. Worked out great. Very much enjoyed. Highly recommend. And the last thing in our cozy spooky vlog for the night. Basically, Cage's birthday is in the fall and every year since we've been together, one of the things that I make for his birthday is a watercolor painting of us and our cats and all of our memories that we've like gotten done over the years. It's always a fun ritual for me to sit down and think about um, everything that's been new for us and all the fun adventures that we've been on and sketch that out and then color it in with my lovely watercolor paints. Art is so meditative and relaxing for me. It's wonderful to just dim the lights and light a couple of candles, get a nice hot cup of tea and just reflect and think about um, all the lovely times that I've spent <laughs> with my partner um, over the last year and getting to commemorate it all into a nice painting. Uh, basically, before I met him, I usually would make like a painting around once a year of like New Year's goals and it was a really good way to reflect on how things were going and what I was doing and like whatever, whatever. And since we've been together, this is kind of a more exciting and fun way to do it. Um, basically just getting to look at all the things that we've been doing and how our life has been expanding, our geocaching, our drives and camping and adventures, all our tea and photos and pumpkin carving and banjo playing and cemetery dates. It's just the best. So, um, yes. So that's all I got for you today. I really appreciate you sticking to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful and happy autumn season or whenever you're watching this. And I hope that you are being very kind to yourself. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night or whenever you're listening. Bye for now. <laughs>